do you find yourself asking yourself the same questions I do when, when you look at everything that's happening in the world right now over the last kind of three four years so many things seem to have escalated to a point of no return while the world was distracted with what's been going on over the last few years with people being locked down etc it just seems like government took advantage of this and brought in so many crazy things it all lines up to scripture it looks like um the b system as it's called it seems to be lining up about to get ready but what's out there at the moment is so clear and vivid and that's why today i just wanted to show you when people are saying that they see this happening they know something is going on even people of the world people who don't believe in prophecy or in jesus christ feel like there's something going on but those of us who are in him know that this is not taking us by surprise but this is essentially leading up to the crescendo and what i'll ask you to do is to watch it unfold get the full context and your eyes will open to see the plan see what they are about to do but remember to smash the like button just so that one person may come to find who jesus christ truly is if you're looking to get me you'll find my email down below have a listen to what jordan peterson said c40 websites the c40 is the consortium of municipalities that have signed on to the 15 minute city plan and i read in their own documentation this is relevant to the uh tri-state city idea that their goals are to reduce caloric cal caloric consumption to 2500 calories a day by by force essentially within the next 15 years to ensure that the peasant class which is everybody but the elitists can't fly more than one time every three years to not merely shift private car ownership from fossil fuel to electric which is fundamentally impossible because the grid can't handle it but to eliminate 90 percent of of private car ownership so that people are forced to take you know, unbelievably expensive in terms of time utilization and non-existent public transportation systems and to limit the amount of travel that people can do outside of their neighborhoods. And, you know, I find and then I watch the legacy media claim that pointing that out is something akin to a right wing, wing conspiracy, which it most certainly isn't because you can just find the bloody documentation online. And then I look at places like China, which have taken this to an extreme 400 600 million closed circuit TV cameras in China, one for every one and a half persons watching the Chinese all the time, able to monitor them 100% by face and also to identify them by gate and, and to limit their ability to do absolutely anything, to buy, to sell, to travel, to move, to leave their neighborhood with this top down surveillance system that perversely and consciously the some of the Chinese engineers have actually named Skynet and in a conscious attempt to produce a positive version of, you know, the absolutely catastrophic apocalyptic artificial intelligence that was in the bloody Arnold Schwarzenegger movies. And you can't even talk about this stuff without sounding like a raving conspiratorialist. But but there it is. Now, tell me more about the tri-state city. So what have you seen? Because I don't know anything about it. Neither does anybody else watching, I presume, except for you know, those have gone down the rabbit hole with you. Uh, I was reading a book about cholera a couple of years ago. I think it was called Ghost Map. And, uh, and interestingly, towards the end of the book, he, the, the author in an otherwise excellent book started talking about these smart cities where, you know, basically everything, we don't have to worry about any disease anymore, that sort of thing. Last time I was in China, uh, you know, I got kicked out of Hong Kong in 2020. I was a bad boy. I was watching the protest and they finally kicked me out after seven months. But that was Hong Kong. But when I was, the last time I was in mainland China, I was actually, uh, researching information more. I was in places like Nanjing and Shanghai and that sort of thing. But I was in southern China, uh, where the Uyghurs are, uh, at, for part of that trip. And I, I was talking with restaurant owners and farmers and that sort of thing. And the restaurant, various restaurant owners told me that when a Uyghur comes in, they are mandated by law to call the police immediately. The police immediately come to check. So the smart city goes beyond mere optics. You know, they're installing those cameras all over Hong Kong. They were doing it that when I left. That's in Hong Kong. But over in mainland China, it's not just the cameras everywhere. It's also, you know, you're mandated to call. When I was in Hong Kong, by the way, in the protest, the, the, the protesters would take their lasers and shine them in the cameras and, and burn out the sensors. Actually, my camera got a little damaged by it. And, but you know, that's not a long-term solution, obviously. But the, the, what I'm getting to is these smart cities are clearly coming and they're already here to some degree. 
every time we use our cards and that sort of thing. But they're clearly taking it to a higher level of complete control. And again, they this isn't conspiratorial. They say they're going to do it. I mean, talk about Mark Rutte, the prime minister of Netherlands. You can see Klaus Schwab going, where do you find such prime ministers as Mark Rutte? You know, did you see him say, I, I, I watch your Twitter, uh, Jordan, and I, and I watch a lot of your uh, podcast. I know you know what's going on because you talk about it all the time. We know when we look at scripture, we look at Revelation and other passages that in relation to prophecy, that that man is going to come who will be in charge for a period of time, who will have so much power to coerce people into what he wants them to do. And we're see, it looks like we're seeing that happening now, like it's lining up for that time period. But the good news is there's still time. Jesus can be found right now. So to those who do not know him, know that he is right there beside you, that the gospel is true that he did live, he died and rose again, and he would do it just for you who's watching this. Um, something else that came across my lap, I've showed it before, and it's just another voice to show you that people know what's going on. Um, and I'll leave you with this, but remember, regardless of all the chaos that's going on in the world, God is in control, and keep the faith. This is a plan that was agreed to by 179 nations. It's called the Agenda for the 21st Century. It's a totalitarian state to being developed right now all over the world. It is the inventory and control plan. Inventory and control of all land, all water, all minerals, all plants, all animals, all construction, all means of production, all food, all energy, all information and all human beings in the world. And this is a plan that was agreed to by 179 nations back in 1992. It's a United Nations plan. It's called the Agenda for the 21st Century. And so many of us around the world think that, um, well, sustainable development, it just sounds so great. Isn't it about recycling and creative reuse and uh, and creating energy and food resources for everyone? And the answer is no, it really is not. It's about moving populations into city centers, concentrated city centers, and clearing them out of the rural areas. All systems have to be brought into harmony in order to control them all. Because when systems don't meet, when they're, when they're out of balance or not in sync with one another, they can't be controlled centrally. And the goal of Agenda 21 is one world government and total control from a central unit. Every nation that signed on to Agenda 21 has its, uh, its local Agenda 21 plan. People in the United States are completely unaware of this. If I go out and talk about this, the United States press will attacks me and calls me which is it's totally ridiculous. It is a but it's not a theory. It's a fact. The three pillars of United Nations Agenda 21 are economy, ecology, and equity, the three E's. And everyone's sort of thinks that they know what that means, the idea of social equity. It must mean that, well, everyone's going to have access to clean water and clean air, and uh, no one's uh, property is going to be used as a dumping ground because they are at a poverty level. But really what social equity is about is about impoverishing huge portions of the population and bringing down uh, deve the developed nations everything that we're looking at now is destined to collapse our economies. It's a totalitarian state to being developed right now all over the world. And what major corporations want in this development is to be able to, uh, to have move, full movement of, of, uh, of workers without borders or boundaries, to be able to move their goods through without regulations, and to reduce wages. And so this is the goal. So this is what you find with social equity. And of course, economy and uh, ecology is about, these are the three circles, economy, ecology, and social equity. And where they meet in the center is balance. But really that balance is a communitarian balance. So it's not balance of well-being of the people. What it is is it's a balance for corporations so that they can exploit and control 
and have populations in an area in tightly packed dense areas so that they can be surveilled and managed and this is what that balance looks like as far as the development of a totalitarian state is the mainstream media is owned by five major corporations and you're not going to get this information from the mainstream press so you need to be your own press you need to educate yourself you need to get out there and educate your neighbors your community your real community you need to help your children understand that they're being indoctrinated from pre-kindergarten to postgraduate school all of us have a responsibility to ourselves and to others this is true community to work for personal freedom and always remember that even though we work as a group, if we do work as a group, we're all individuals in those groups and we answer only to ourselves. And this is essential. It's essential as, as, as free human beings, this is what we are. We are free and we need to continue to be free. And I do believe that we will win, but we have to become aware that there is a fight and then make our friends and our neighbors and our community aware as well and work together.